Hi, I'm Betsy Boyd, and I am an assistant professor at California State University, Chico, and I am the sole pest management person in the College of Agriculture there. I have kind of a perfect job in a lot of ways at Chico where I can not only perform uh, research that works in agriculture and in, in terms of IPM develop sampling and monitoring and, uh, and management tactic uh, options for growers and for farmers um, and, and then be able to teach about that and teach farmers about it. In addition, I'm also a licensed pest control advisor myself in the state of California and I am um, a farmer. I farm five acres of walnuts. So I've been asked to share with you my views on the value of integrated pest management uh, in orchard crops. And I wanted to start by first saying that I think there is great value in integrated pest management. But before I go into why, I would like to explain first a little bit about what integrated pest management is. It's typically referred to as IPM. And IPM, of course, stands for integrated pest management, but those words have a lot of meaning behind them. Integration refers to the integration or uh, the multitude of management tactics that you take to manage a pest population in some system. And it could be in your backyard, it could be in your home garden, it could be the bacterial complex in your own body, it could be an agricultural system, um, but in specifically, it utilizes the proper identification of all organisms. It's key because you need to understand what organism you're dealing with in order to make decisions about what types of management tactics to take and when to, when to make those management tactics. Usually IPM involves five different management tactics and that includes cultural management which are production system decisions that we make, uh, when to fertilize, how to keep our trees healthy, um, when we might go ahead and irrigate. Uh, things like that that can have an indirect impact on the pest. And then there's four other management tactics that directly impact the pest and those include physical, biological, mechanical, and chemical. The physical usually involves things like uh, wind, rain, other physical environmental forces that are out there that are abiotic generally. Biological management involves the use of living organisms to combat other living organisms. And mechanical uses machines or tools. Uh, you might think of mowing weeds as a great example of a mechanical uh, management tactic. And lastly, there's the chemical management tactic. And all production systems, all agriculture uses chemicals, whether it is organic or conventional. And it's very important that people understand that. Integrated pest management is something that, unless you ask and know a farmer and ask them how they practice their management of different pests, you won't find out on the label of a product whether or not a, a, a product is produced with a high level of integrated of management tactics or a low level. Why is that important? Why would you care? The reason you might care is because integrated pest management has principles that integrate human health, our environment, everything around us, our entire system, the earth. Uh, it integrates how our single tactics can influence all of these other elements around us. And it involves a lot of knowledge. But unless you ask a grower or ask a farmer how they manage their land or ask someone how they produced their tomatoes in their backyard, you may not know anything about how, how much integrated pest management they use. So there's a continuum of IPM usually in most uh, agricultural systems. And it's no different in orchards as it is in row crops or anywhere else. There's, um, even in organic production, there's a continuum of how much IPM is utilized. So how would you go about asking a farmer how much IPM they use? 
What types of questions might you, might you want to find out? The questions that I would ask are, what types of pests do you have? And what do you do to combat those pests? What type of fertility programs do you have and how much water do you use? Those are all types of questions that are important in terms of how this integrated pest management program is really working. So ideally, the best IPM program out there would ideally have one of each of the different types of management tactics at least. Usually there's biological combination with cultural and mechanical and there's a lot of different pests in the system. So sometimes there's only one or two tools or management tactics available for each of those pests. But what you would like to find out, what I would like to find out from my growers is how many of those different tactics are they using and do they practice using chemicals as a last resort? It requires a lot of information. You have to be educated. And this is where I think that I want to make a difference in IPM. There's a lot of basic biology and ecology. You know, in terms of challenges and potential weaknesses that we have to still overcome, one of the main weaknesses that I see is that we do need more research in basic biology and ecology of organisms. Oftentimes we're looking for a quick fix or a new management tactic but we can't develop new management tactics if we don't know more about the organisms we're working with. So we need to go there. And the second thing is you. You. You the consumer. Every one of us needs to eat. Don't you want to know what kind of food you eat? There needs to be a demand from you to decide whether or not IPM is being utilized. What's the continuum? How many different management tactics are farmers using to manage their pests? Are they looking out for the environment? Are they implementing IPM? I work with a lot of growers and I work with a lot of students that are also children of growers and farmers. And most of them want to use IPM. They need more tools. They would also be encouraged if there was a market for it. And the consumer creates the market. So you have the power to find out what type of food you're eating. Overall, I think IPM has a really good road ahead. I think that there's a lot of promise in this mindset and this strategy. I think it's going to involve research, education, collaboration between researchers, growers, and consumers like you, and lastly, implementation. And we can't have implementation quite in the way that we need it, quite yet, unless the consumer, you, demand it. Thanks for listening. Have a good day.